Woody Allen lay fully clothed on the queen-sized bed in his bedroom that doubles as his workroom on the third floor of his Manhattan townhouse, writing a film script in longhand on a legal pad. A bed has been his routine writing spot for decades, even when he is staying in a hotel. What was not routine this day in February 2013 was that he was alternately working on two scripts, one a contemporary drama about a burned-out philosophy professor who unexpectedly finds renewed purpose by deciding to kill a judge he believes is about to ruin the lives of an innocent woman and her children, the other a romantic comedy set in the 1920s about a curmudgeonly magician enlisted to unmask a young woman with apparent powers as a spiritualist. Unsure of which to film that summer to follow Blue Jasmine, for which Kate Blanchett won a Best Actress Oscar, and his script a Best Original Screenplay nomination, he worked several days on the comedy until his enthusiasm waned and then switched to the drama, until his zest for that one flagged and he returned to the comedy. He might stay with one idea for fifteen minutes or three days before being distracted by the other. Though far from normal, there have been several occasions when he has written simultaneously on two ideas, and at least one when he wrote three successive separate scripts in twelve weeks before he had the one he wanted. I lose confidence, he said while switching between these two, and I sometimes panic and think, don't try and fix this, jump ship. But in this instance, when he liked both ideas, he temporarily fell victim to obsessional indecision. He picked one and plunged in because he could see everything falling in place so beautifully. The magician vanishes the elephant, and they call him in to help expose the spiritualist, and he meets the beautiful girl with the pre-Raphaelite hair. But the idea quickly went from idealization in my mind to actuality on the printed page, and from the platonic ideal of perfection to all the warts. So he moved back to the murder. He calls this the automatic anxiety of second-guessing, manifesting his concern that anything he writes will not be the best follow-on to the last film insofar as variety of subject. He says he could be sitting with Gone with the Wind or A Day at the Races and still be anxious that he'd made the wrong choice. While he remains hostage to his uncertainty, his aim is to tell a tale that draws in the audience. I'm offering up story all the time. That, to me, is what the movies are. When Woody finished the handscript of the comedy about the magician in March, he sat at the small table in the corner of his room and used the same Olympia portable typewriter he has had for his entire career to type on yellow foolscap what was on the legal pages now covered with cross-outs and overwriting in his cramped script. He then made more changes with a ballpoint pen on what he typed, cut and stapled portions of these further edited pages together, and sent them to Helen Robin, his longtime associate producer, who has typed clean versions of his screenplays for nearly thirty years. He is the sole arbiter of his work. There is no outside authority who can make changes. His script is almost prose, she says. A character's name may be on the left side. As I'm typing it, I use a script program that formats on the page, but I decide to make a scene cut based on where he's written. My typed version goes back to him with his copy, and after a few days, I get back a combination of the original yellow typed pages with cutouts of some of what I've typed, stapled and mixed in with handwritten changes. Then I do the next revision and send it to him. That generally goes on until we shoot, usually two to four revisions. When she returned the first version of the script three days later, he sent her the drama about the professor. Both scripts were soon sent to a few trusted readers, including his sister, Letty Aronson, a producer of his films, and Juliet Taylor, who cast them for more than 40 years until her retirement in 2016.